Welcome back to the channel, everybody. My name is Kwaku, and today is an off day, but there is a new Windows Insider preview out for the dev channel, and it is 21301, like I said, for the dev channel. And I'm just gonna summarize this straight up so that you can click away, because I've seen it. Uh, this is pretty much the touch keyboard update, uh, where the most of the changes that happened happened to the touch keyboard. Um, and going into more detail here, so it says here, building on the de design changes already live in the dev channel, Windows Insiders will start to notice some refinements rolling out for the touch keyboard based on their feedback. So, as you know, the touch keyboard, if you aren't already familiar, is this right here. So this is the touch keyboard for Windows. Now, I have changed my screen resolution technically to 1440p or 2560 by 1440, um, but... This is essentially the touch keyboard. Uh, it's not on a laptop right now. This is just my desktop, so I don't have a touch screen. And this is what it looks like. So when you type, let's say I want to type, this is how it is. And we have the swipe and stuff like that. Uh, so that, that's how it currently looks. Now, I will tell you right now, the features that are in this here update for the keyboard, not everybody is getting right away. Um, even when you update, you'll get the bug fixes, but you won't necessarily get the keyboard updates. Very few people will get that so they can control bugs and control feedback for that. But here it says when undocking the keyboard, it now switches from the small keyboard to the small keyboard layout. And you can easily move the keyboard around using the gripper region at the top of the keyboard. So basically the gripper region is this area right here. You can easily move it around on top of the keyboard. Um, and it says here, small and split layouts now feature an updated symbols view based on the default layout. So unfortunately, I don't get to have that new small and symbols view, but this is symbols view essentially. Um, and it says here it is for the small and split layouts. So if I click this gear icon and I go to small layout, which makes it more like a smartphone, this is how it looks. It looks just like what you're familiar with Windows Phone and some smartphones. And this is the symbols view right here where you can choose the different symbols that you want to put in with your text messages or your um, or your typing in general. And it says we'll feature a based on a symbols view based on the default layout. And of course, this is the default layout right here. And this is the symbols view there. So going on further, we have settings menus. Now it has a nested structure for improved clarity and less clutter. So this is the nested structure right here. So you see keyboard layout is a drop down. And I'll show you what it looks like right now if you don't have it. Keyboard layout has a drop down. You hover over it and then you get the default small, split, and traditional views. Right now, I don't get that. They didn't push it to me, but this is how it looks for everybody else. You have the default small, split, traditional, and handwriting. It's not nested, it's just there in front of you. So I guess they're trying to declutter and make it so that things are a little bigger to touch, but at the same time, um, at the same time, just just clean it up a little bit, which is nice. Uh, going back deeper, it says some insiders will see updates to default keyboard on the 12 or larger inch screens, having more traditional layout, featuring an ESC or escape tab and Windows key and other small tweaks. Of course, again, I don't have that. All I have is control in this kind of funky place right here. Um, so you can see the Windows key is supposed to be there. In fact, let me, let me go to default and that is it. So you can see the Windows key and when I dock it, there you go, and then you'll see it up here. So escape, I don't have escape. So basically this essentially mimics your normal laptop and con, you know computer keyboard. On here right now, if you don't have that feature up when you update this dev channel build, um, this is what yours will look like still. And if you do have it, you'll know because you'll have these other things. If you have a 12 inch or higher uh, screen, which I'm pretty sure is like everybody out there. I don't know who has a smaller size screen. Um, and going down more, we also have this one thing they heard from customers is that the candidate bar can feel cluttered and hard to quickly process. So to, to reduce cognitive overload, they display five candidates minimum. And candidates are candidates of words that you're trying to type. So like and, as, also, are, all. And an example will be if I start typing uh, TH, you see that they're showing quite a bit different things for that. Um, and now, and it's also to the far left for me. Now, what they're going to do is they're going to just make it more like a mobile and iPad style interface, Android style interface on a tablet where it's just, it's bigger, easier to touch. Once again, you can tell everything that they're doing makes things slightly easier to touch because it is for the touch keyboard. And it says again, 
It's rolling out to a subset of insiders in the dev channel at first to help quickly identify issues that might impact performance and reliability, but they will gradually, gradually come out to everybody in the dev channel. And just a few things that I wanted to point out with some of the fixes they did in the last update, um, they were working on updates to figure out how to fix the whole Assassin's Creed issue and also state of the decay issues and some other apps and games that weren't running and crashing on startup. In this update, they have actually fixed it. So you can scroll down and if I can find it, um, yeah, right here it says we fix an issue where certain games like state of decay 2 or Assassin's Creed may hang or crash when launching. So lo and behold, that does work. I'm not gonna demonstrate it, but it does work. Uh, I can get Assassin's Creed Valhalla as well as Assassin's Creed Odyssey to work perfectly fine. State of Decay 2, I don't have it installed, so it, it is what it is. But they work, and so they did in fact fix it, which is pretty nice because I can play the game again since I haven't played it since November. That's when the issue happened. And then going down more, I'm not going to go through all of this. You can go look at the change log um, yourself. It will be in the description box. But going down more. Um, it even says here we fixed an issue resulting in narrator not reading elements of our troubleshooters when in scan mode and then some known issues mirror cast issues when you are using mirror cast uh, you may experience low frame rates very low frame rates um, it says looking for reports of the update process hanging for extended periods of time when attempting to install a new build so when it sits at like 10% for a very long time they're looking to fix that uh, going down further, they said, uh, we're investigating issue impacting the reliability of start and other modern apps. If you're impacted, you may experience a start menu layout resetting. That used to happen to me. It's gotten fixed for me. Um, so I guess it's other people still having the issue. Live previews for pin sites down here aren't enabled for all insiders yet. So you may see a gray window when hovering over the thumbnail um, in the taskbar. So if you pin a website, uh, you can see I pin it. Unfortunately, this is supposed to be for Edge, I'm pretty sure. But if you pin a website to the taskbar, um, live preview may not show up. And then going down more, we have uh, news and interest updates. Uh, the fly It's just pretty much for news and interest and in the summary. I'm not going to go through all of it. But news and interest is that little area right here where in the last update, um, a lot of people got that new feature where it kind of showed kind of like what their new design language is going towards rounded corners and it showed like the weather and stuff in this big area here a lot of people complain that it took up a lot of space um but they're addressing those issues now and they're saying that so sometimes news flyouts uh could not be dismissed with a pen uh news and interest uses more taskbar space than expected these are all um fixes bugs that they see they know um they say uh, taskbar button can now can now can show stale information each time the user signs into their Windows session. And again, this is on under known issues. And then it also says attempting to share content dismisses the flyout. So imagine clicking this, and then the moment you hit share, it dismisses the flyout, and then you're like, "What did I just click on? I don't remember." They're fixing those things. So they have a lot of fixes for news and interest. Of course, it's not coming out to everybody right away, but it's slowly trickling out to people. So when I get it. Hopefully it's probably it's probably gonna be near the final build of uh, news and interest before I get it. And then the final thing here to not let this video run too long is ARM64 update for Qualcomm Adreno graphics. It says users who installed the preview version of the Adreno graphics driver on Surface Pro X may experience reduced brightness of display. And it says that will be addressed in a future update. So yeah, that is pretty much it in a nutshell. There's a ton of information in there. I don't want to create this, make this video too dense. Um, but in a nutshell, they did update the keyboard stuff, uh, the touch keyboard. So take a look at that if you're running a Surface or any touchscreen device, which I am not of any of them. Um, but yeah, and when I get those actual updates for me to try out myself instead of these minor bug fixes, I will let you guys know. But as always, leave a comment in the description box below, or rather the comment section below. And uh, this link to this article will be in the description box. And we're closing in on 700. Take care, and a uh, video will be out on Thursday as well. So stay tuned.